Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Fish Forage Hunt. So red snapper season opened on the 1st of June, but we had a huge storm rolling through here and we had a big trip planned on the 6th. Well, that storm pushed our trip and it got canceled. So last weekend we went over to the east coast of Florida and we caught red snapper after red snapper after red snapper. But they're closed on that coast. So we were determined to get some red snapper so that we could grill them on our little acorn barbecue grill uh, because barbecued fish is delicious. So yesterday we went out on the Miss Venice with a couple of friends and we got some red snapper. So we're gonna show you how we grill them up. We're gonna keep the skin on. I'm gonna show you a little special secret too with part of the fish that most people throw away. It's absolutely delicious and I can't wait to show you. We headed out at 6 a.m. and we high speed trolled on the way out. The mackerel bite was hot. The hook, the hook. Who's, whose hook is actually in his mouth? The hook, the hook. Uh, That's not your fish. Uh, I know. It's sucks. his hook. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so he did hit yours first. Yeah, he did hit yours first. And he got hooked and then he was like, I'm still hungry. And... <laughs> yeah. I'll just keep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wow, that one's really pretty. Fishing's been really hard in the Gulf lately, so we were able to pull up only a couple lanes of vermilion and a couple reds. But still, being on the water can't be beat. This is the spot. I'll take that B-liner any day. Red, that's a lane. We got a big lane and two red snappers and a B-liner. That's a pretty solid fish, even on this light line. Holy shit. There's a red, that's a keeper. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, on this little goo fish. On that little tiny hook. No, you're good. I was gonna go over. On the tiny hook. That is just pure old fashioned showing off right there. That's all that is. Hey guys, we're back in the kitchen. I wanted to show you our total catch before we start to focus on these two red snapper. Okay, so we got the two reds, we have five lanes, and we have two vermilion. I'll prep these for us for later, but I really wanna highlight these two amazing fish. The American red snapper. They are in season right now, and they are delicious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna descale these. I'm gonna show you how I do that in the sink because um, the scales will go everywhere. And then I will show you uh, how I get the fillets off with the skin on. And then it, we're gonna cook them on the grill. And we're gonna have asparagus and we're gonna have rice. And it's gonna be amazing. But don't stop watching after we show you what we cook because I've got a special surprise for you and it will help you to reduce the fish waste that you always see when people process fish. So let's get started. Especially large fish. Oh yeah, large fish. Uh, you're not gonna wanna do them on the small fish, but that shouldn't stop you. The, the secret that I'm gonna show you is, just wait and see. I'm excited to show you. So here we go. All right guys, so what you see here is the smaller of the two red snapper. Barely legal. <laughs> Barely legal. This was Megan's and she thinks it's a female. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the fins. It just makes it easier to descale so that we don't end up spining ourselves or puncturing your finger as you're trying to remove the scales. So what I have here is just a normal pair of kitchen shears. And what I like to do is just come from the back and just cut right up the, the base of these spines. And a good pair of shears will do the trick. I'm gonna take my fish descaler. It's got some teeth here on this side and it's flat on this side. And simply, I like to use the tip of this and we're just gonna go up against how the scales form, so tail to head. Okay, now if you're doing this at home, you know, scales will go everywhere, but that's okay. I mean, we've got this, but that's okay. We've got the foil line sink. And man, these are coming right off. And you can see the nice color difference. So we're just gonna go all the way up from the tail to the head and we're going to include the belly. This is part of our secret 
recipe that we're going to show you at the end of this video. Very important to descale all the way up to the gills. So I'm going to remove the filet, but I'm going to keep the skin on. Once this is done, we're going to season both sides of the filet with olive oil, salt, and pepper. We're going to place the skin side down on a piece of foil, and then to the top side, we're going to add basil, thyme, chives, garlic, a little bit of lime slices, and some butter. Then we're going to throw that tin foil on the grill. Now the final steps to preparing these fillets is to make sure that you get rid of all the pin bones. Here, I felt for all the bones, and then I'm cutting a little V-notch out where all those bones line up down that little bit of bloodline. We're going to get our charcoal nice and hot, and we'll see you back here in a few minutes. All right, grill's just at 475. We're going to go ahead and add this on. Ooh, nice. Lump charcoal smells good. There we go. That smells delicious. All right, it's the rainy season in Florida, and you can hear it under our covered lanai. I got my buddy Cyrus sitting right here. I got some asparagus, some of the delicious fish that we just made, and some rice peel off. So I'm gonna dig in. First and foremost, the fish. Mmm. That little bit of lime comes through, the fresh herbs. But super easy way to make fish. You know, descaling it okay takes a little bit of work. Definitely worth it. That skin adds just a little bit of flavor to it. You can't be beat. Mm. Rice pilaf, my favorite. Ate it ever since I was a kid. Mm. And then asparagus on the grill, my favorite. Mm. Done just right. Crispy, not soggy. What do you think, buddy? Ground a little piece? He's a picky eater, and he just ate the fish. So if that tells you something, please give this recipe a try. So we're gonna eat before it gets too bad out here. All right, here comes the fun part. We're gonna remove the throat. To do that, we're gonna start at the anus and we're gonna work our way towards the head. It's important to keep your knife pressed up against the bottom of the belly so that you don't accidentally slice into the innards. Once you reach the pec fins, I like to make a little cut on either side. These fins go relatively deep and it's difficult to cut between them. By cutting around the pec fins, it allows me to remove that little section of meat and pull all the innards out at the end of this. Next, we're gonna take a pair of snips, in this case I'm using Fiskars, and we're gonna cut through this little piece of bone right here. After you've made that cut, it's much easier to get your knife in to separate the membrane of the throat from the gills, and that's what you see here. Since we're keeping the throat as one piece, whatever we do to one side, we need to make sure to do to the other. Here's us removing the gills on the other side of the fish. The last cuts that we need to make are through the bone, right about the middle of where the gill plate is. And here you can see me doing just that. Now, if there's a little bit of flesh, you can take your knife and cut through it. We'll make the same cut on the other side and go all the way through the bone. And then we'll make sure that any membrane that's still attached is cut cleanly through. If you encounter any more bones, it's okay to use the snips again to get through them. This next part is a bit graphic, so if you're squeamish, you might want to fast forward. We're going to grab the throat and we're going to pull it away from the fish, along with any innards that may be attached to the underside of the throat. Once the throat is removed, make sure you clean it thoroughly. Then return it to the cutting board. It's going to look something like this. Make a small cut right down the middle, and then you're going to flatten it with both hands. This makes the throat look like a wing, and this is why they're called snapper wings. All right, so the other day you saw me prep the throats for these fish. I ate so much fish on Monday night that I was full. I didn't want this to go to waste. This needs to be eaten the day you cook it, and we're gonna do that tonight. 
So we're gonna prepare our hard fish throats now. Then we're gonna add some olive oil onto both sides, salt and pepper to both sides, and our herb mixture, which is basil, oregano, rosemary, and chives. Then we're gonna add a little bit of garlic on top of that. Then we're gonna put some limes on top of that, get that nice citrusy flavor. And then I'll add a couple pats of butter and the whole thing will be rounded out. We're gonna get the grill up to 450 degrees. Once it's there, I'm gonna take a paper towel with some vegetable oil and I'm going to rub the grates. And I can't stress this enough, you've gotta rub the grates a few times until they glisten with the oil and they're black. Once that happens, you know you can put your fish on it. So here we go. First and foremost, olive oil. Give it a liberal amount on both sides. Okay, and you're just gonna get your hands in there. Now on this grouper, I have not removed the, the fins on the side, so you gotta be real careful as you're working around those because you don't wanna get poked very sharp. Oh, I didn't remove the fins because it looks cool. And when they're dried out like this um, and you put them on the grill, they actually get crispy. And if you're daring enough, you can eat them. They're like little chips. He likes them. I don't. So this grouper, I mean, man, that's just thick. I'll flip these little pieces over. Add a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I'm doing olive oil on both sides first, and then I'm gonna salt and pepper the bottom, then flip them over. I like to do this so that I'm not flipping the meat over and over and over again. Let me just rinse my hands off real quick. Wash my hands with soap and water. I'm back. We're gonna add liberal amounts of salt to this fish. Now this is coarse salt. I like it, it adds a little bit of a crunch. You can use finer grain, whatever you like. Mm. Now this is the side that's gonna hit the, the heat first. But all of that flavor is gonna be on the top for the most part. This is just to add extra flavor to the bottom. Again, if you don't want to eat the skin, I wouldn't worry too much about this, but I'm going to eat the skin. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Flip these bad boys over. Boop. Boop. Wash, rinse, and repeat. All right. We're going to do the same thing to this side. Salt first. Nice and liberal. Now remember, this is where all your flavor is going to be, so make sure you get it nice and well seasoned. Megan's looking at me like, what are you doing? It's okay. I like it flavorful. Now there is fat in this meat. And so that fat and that salt's gonna mix together. She's never had this because she doesn't like the fattiness of it. So next up, I am gonna add my garlic right here. The reason I'm going to add my herbs on top of this is I want that garlic flavor to leach right into the meat. And if it's sitting on top of the herbs, we won't get the same results. So there, you can see that I've got the fish nice and prepared. I'm gonna sprinkle these fresh herbs on it. And this is just our little mixture. You can use whatever you want to. We find that the basil brings out that nice summer flavor along with the limes that are gonna go on top. And then the oregano, the rosemary and the chives just blend it out real nicely, especially when you add that little bit of fat from the butter. We're gonna get these limes on here. I'm gonna cut just a couple more slices here. For these smaller pieces of fish. Like that. And now to hold everything together, I'm just gonna press everything down. All right, so we've got the acorn up to 550. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it off real quick. So I'm gonna use peanut oil. I'm gonna dip some paper towels in it, and I'm gonna use the tongs to coat the grill liberally. I'm gonna do this three to four times. Again, if you don't do this, your fish will stick to the grill. Now that we got this nice black shine to it, we're gonna go ahead and get these throats cooking. I'm gonna start with the biggest one first. Oh, 
Oh yeah, and you can hear that sizzle. Oops. Get that butter back off there. And get the red snapper up on the other side. All right, now these little pieces are gonna cook faster than the rest of it, which is fine. Just gotta keep an eye on it. So let's go ahead and close this up for a couple minutes and we'll come back and check on it. Okay, let's go ahead and get these smaller pieces off of here. You can tell that they're done just by the color of them. Oh yeah. Comes right off the grill, no sticking. You can see this meat cooked all the way through. The star of tonight's dinner is this American red snapper that we caught. They only open up for a couple weeks every year and the meat is fantastic. So this is the wing that we've shown you and this is the secret recipe right here. Oh my God. It's like, so with the garlic and the butter, it's kind of like a scampi. Then you throw the fresh herbs on it and the lime and it just changes it all together. Talk about the crispy skin. You can see that it charred up nicely on this piece here and there are hardly any bones in that wing. Mm. But I tell you, too many people throw the whole head away. And if you want a real treat, this is the secret recipe right here. When you're pulling the meat off, you just take your, take your fork and just scrape. All the bones from the throat remain on the bottom and the meat comes right off on the top. And here you go. Mm. So the grouper, because it was so thick, needs a couple more minutes on the grill. I'm not gonna waste your guys' time while I sit here and I eat the red snapper, and then I eat the red grouper. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button. If you wanna see more, please subscribe, tell your friends about it. If there's something you guys wanna see or something that you would do differently, always love to hear your comments. Please drop one in the comment section below. See you next time on Fish Forge Hunt.